Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's track guide for the IR04. First of all, I'll get it out of the way. You may notice something a little bit different about this track guide than previous track guides, but I won't point it out to you. Anyway, enough about that. We are at the Red Bull Ring uh, this week. It should be a great and fun week of racing. The lap itself can kind of be fun, but it's really all about the racing here. There's going to be a ton of draft, a ton of opportunity to go wheel to wheel and side by side. Uh, that said, there's also going to be kind of some annoyance probably with off tracks, with one X's. Uh, you got to watch out for slowdowns, particularly coming out of the final corner and onto the main straight. So just keep that all in mind. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the lap before we dive into the details corner by corner. And before we check out all of the details, I do just want to say if you haven't subscribed, please consider doing so now. It's super helpful for me as I grow this channel, and it'll give you the opportunity to get notifications every week when I come out with a track guide or start coming out with other content, which I do plan on doing. Also, please check out the description below. There's a ton of great stuff down there, including a like link to this lap on Garage 61 if you want to do a telemetry comparison. Um, there's like a promo code for Maradness.com. There may be other promo codes in the future hint hint wink wink and uh yeah there's other stuff down there like a link to my discord if you want to you know catch up with me offline or in a different way uh link to my twitch channel twitch.tv slash elgato coma pipa if you want to give me a follow there and come hang out when i stream as well as a link to a discord for a league called the alt f4 racing league so if you want to join an f4 league that runs on thursdays uh check that out as well anyway like i said the description has a bunch of great stuff check out the description it's a great place. Anyway, let's check out the track conditions and then analyze this lap. Before we get started, let's take a look at our track conditions. We have a 31 degree Celsius track with 22 degree air temperature and slight usage at 5%. We also have a rules tab this week, which outlines the track limits around the track. Essentially, as long as you keep your tires in contact with the red and white curbing on corner exits, you're in good shape. In the final corners, you'll see that they also allow you to use the green and white curbing. Remember, you only need to keep one set of tires in contact with those, so you can go a little bit beyond that with essentially half the car. This doesn't outline track limits at corner entries in some places like turn one, turn two, and going into the final corners, so we will talk about those as well throughout the track guide so you're prepared to use as much of the track as you need to put together a nice quick lap. As for our laps, uh, we kind of started testing the limits right out of the gate. Uh, there are a lot of off tracks here. There are some places that you can get slowdowns. So I really wanted to push the limits on these laps before reining it all in and putting together this 131.499 there at the end for a nice, clean, tidy lap that we're going to take a look at and talk about now. Mm -hmm. 
Turn one is a pretty fast right-hander that leads us onto the long climb up the hill. We're entering pretty quickly as we come off the main straight, but our focus should really be about our exit and maximizing the speed as we exit because of that climb up the hill. That said, it's important to avoid any delays to our throttle application here, so we really want to focus on a smooth entry that allows us to get back on throttle quickly while avoiding any corrections after we do. On entry, we want to use all of the curbing on the left-hand side to open up our approach as much as possible. I've found that as long as you keep your right tires within the white line, you should be fine in avoiding an off-track. We can start braking right in between the 100 and the 50 boards, and we can look to turn in just after we pass the 50 board. The main thing here under braking is making sure that we do enough of it in a straight line that we can start trailing off as we turn in and be done with our trail braking as we reach the apex. Not braking enough here can lead us to running wide on exit or having to delay our throttle application so we don't run wide. Being too heavy on the brakes as we go through the corner and reach the apex can easily lead to a spin because the weight of the car is too far forward as we move through the elevation change. As we turn in, we're looking for a smooth, consistent arc through the corner to maintain speed, but also have a good exit. If we turn in too early, it'll kind of be like we went in too quickly, and if we turn in too late, we'll just have a hard time getting to the apex. As we get to the apex, we want to get back to throttle quickly and continue our arc as the car fades out to the exit curbing, and our goal is to place our left tires on top of the yellow anti-cut curbing as we get to the exit. If you run completely over the yellow curb, the car will bottom out and it'll slow our acceleration here, so it's important to note that no yellow curb is better than too much yellow curb to avoid that bottoming out. We also want to make sure that we put both tires on top of the yellow curb. If we just place our rear left tire on top of the curb, we'll upset the balance of the car and we're likely to spin. As long as you don't go beyond the yellow curb on exit, we'll have no issues with getting an off track and we can now focus on running a smooth line up the hill. Turn one can also be a passing opportunity, but you should consider that passing here will mean a slower exit and leave you vulnerable to attack going up the hill towards the turn three braking zone. So it's important to consider whether or not it makes sense to pass here or wait for later on given the racing circumstances. In most cases, in my opinion, it's better to wait for turn three than try to go for the overtake here. Turn two is this little kink and it's easily flat out. Normally I wouldn't discuss this kink, but it's important to talk about because of the discrepancy between the track map and the track info tab. On any track map that you look at, this is considered turn two and turn three is at the top of the hill. On the track info tab that talks about track limits, turn two is at the top of the hill and we have turns two through nine from the top of the hill until the end of the lap. But on a track map, their turns three through 10. So just keep that in mind. I am referring to them as the numbers that they are on the track map, not as the numbers they are in the track info tab. Turn three at the top of the hill is the best overtaking opportunity and likely where you'll find yourself wheel to wheel often. So it's important to practice multiple lines. I'll also note that in clean air, it's totally fine to stay in fifth gear all the way up the hill, even though I used sixth on this lap. We're cresting the hill at the turn three apex, at which point the car is going to get light on us and it's going to limit the grip that we have there and thus the speed that we can carry through the apex. Because of that, our focus here is once again on the exit and making sure that we slow the car sufficiently on entry that we don't have any problems with grip at the apex or on exit so that we can get on throttle quickly in our run back down the hill. If we come into the turn three apex too hot, it's very easy for us to run wide or spin just like it is at turn one. We're once again breaking right in between the 150 boards, but we're gonna wait to turn in for a little bit longer right around where the track starts to change color, and that's because this corner is a little bit tighter and slower than turn one. Our approach here is still the same as turn one though, in that we want to get a lot of braking done in a straight line so that we can trail off the brakes from the time we wanna start turning in until the apex and get on throttle as we reach the apex. There's really nothing new or unique about this approach. Uh, it's a standard corner approach, but I'm just pointing that out. Anyway, 
On entry, we also want to make sure that we use all of the available curbing on the left-hand side, sort of still following that rule of thumb that as long as our right tires are on the black stuff or within the white line, we'll avoid the off-track. As we turn in, we're looking to use all of the red and white curbing at the apex, but we want to avoid touching the yellow anti-cut curbing, which can unsettle the car. On exit, we want to let the car run out to the curbing, but for whatever reason here, I don't like using the yellow raised curbing on exit like we did at turn one. I think at the lower speeds, it just makes it a little bit easier to unsettle the car, which causes us issues with our exit, so I like avoiding it. Staying smooth on exit here is also super important as we head back down the hill because we're likely going to be battling down into turn four, especially if we started battling in turn three. So that exit really helps us either stick a move or hold on to a position. Turn four is another major overtaking opportunity, and similar to turns one and three, we also want to focus on the exit here, although our reasons are slightly different. That said, being able to outbreak your opponent here, and in turn three for that matter, will go a long way with how well you get on overtaking or defending during a race. For turn four, we're heading downhill into the braking zone and we're off camber at the apex, so it's very easy for the car to push wide, so we're limited with how much speed we can take through the apex and on entry. With this in mind, we can't leave things too late, otherwise we're likely to end up in the gravel or spinning trying to compensate while avoiding the gravel. Speaking of the exit, the exit does open up slightly for us so we can be fairly aggressive getting back on throttle once we're ready to do so, but being patient getting to that point is important. We can start braking just after we pass the 100 board and once again we're looking to get all of the heavy braking out of the way before we start turning in. We can start turning in just after the 50 board and we're wanting to find a slightly later apex that allows us to start getting back on throttle as we get there. If we apex too early here, we're going to cut off our exit which makes getting back to throttle more difficult. If we turn in too late, it's going to be hard to get to the apex because the track is angled downhill and the car will want to continue to push wide. As I turn in, I like angling the car towards the corner slightly before turning in a little bit more aggressively, essentially allowing the car to settle down before I ask more of it. As we head towards the apex, we want to place our tires on the red and white curbing, and just as we do, we can start to get back on throttle. One key for knowing when we can get back on throttle is keeping our attention and our eyes up the road at the exit. That information will kind of help tell us whether or not we need to wait just a little bit longer so we can avoid running wide. I mentioned patience before, and that's really what this corner is all about. It feels like a very long time between starting our braking phase and getting back to throttle, so it can be very easy to get on throttle too quickly, thinking it's the right time. Being patient here and getting on throttle a little bit later for a better exit is better than pushing on entry and having to lift on exit to avoid running off track. Turn 5 is easily flat out and we really just want to focus on getting the car to the right hand side for turn 6. Turn 6 is another corner about patience. We're heading downhill through the corner once again so the car wants to push wide. We have to make sure that we get to the apex and use as much of the track as possible while also waiting for the car to be ready for throttle. If we miss the apex or get on throttle too early, it's very easy to run wide. Similar to turn four, a major helper for us is keeping our eyes as far up the road as we can. By focusing on the exit and the track ahead, we can better determine when we can get back on throttle. Similarly, it can feel like a very long time between starting our entry and getting back on throttle, so I want to emphasize once again to be patient and not rush things. It's better to wait and stay on track than it is to push wide and go off track or have to lift on exit to avoid running off track. We can start braking and turning in right around the 50 board, and we don't need much brakes at all. 
we're really just looking for some help moving the weight of the car slightly forward so the front tires can grip and the rear can rotate a little bit better. Too much braking here can easily send us spinning or lead to a lockup, so lighter braking is really what we're going for. As the car turns in, we're really looking to meet up with the apex curbing and follow that curbing for a little bit while keeping our eyes up the road. You can see here that we're actually able to ease back on throttle slightly before the apex if the car is rotating well. Once again, our goal here is not running wide on exit and keeping our focus and attention up the track so we can spot the moment where we won't run wide. As the exit curbing comes into sight, we can open up our hands slightly and we want to use all of the available exit curbing as we ride this down towards turn seven. Turn seven is actually similar to turn six. We're heading downhill initially, so we have to be careful not to unsettle the car or push wide by pushing things too late. The nice thing here though is the track levels out as we come through the corner and as the car compresses there, we'll get more grip. That said, we're looking to still be patient on throttle because we want to make sure that we get a nice run out of turn seven and through turn eight. Turn eight also acts as the exit for turn seven and cuts back in the other direction, so it can be very easy to run into the gravel there if we're not patient at turn seven. I'm looking to start turning in right as we come to the end of the curbing, and I'm giving just a slight tap of the brakes to once again get the car pitched forward and rotating a little bit better. The car can totally handle just lifting here, and I was experimenting with both. I just happened to tap the brakes on this lap, but I did find that in these conditions, it helped me get back on throttle a little bit faster by giving me a little bit better rotation earlier on. As you can see, we're actually doing a lot of coasting here as we're waiting for the car to rotate and hook up with the apex curbing. And our goal here at the apex curbing is to mount that curbing and get our left tire on the other side of the red and white curb to kind of hook in there and give us a little bit more turning grip. Um, that said, as soon as we hook up with these apex curbing, if we've gotten our rotation down, we can start to get back on throttle pretty aggressively with our attention up towards the exit. Similar to other turns here, as soon as we can, we want to move our attention and vision up the track so we can spot when we're ready to get back on throttle so we can avoid running wide at the exit or cutting turn eight, which essentially acts as the exit for turn seven and cuts back in the other direction. Turn eight is essentially just the exit of turn seven and acts as an extension of turn seven. Our ability to stay on track here and not cut the corner really comes down to our approach and execution of turn seven. And if we nail turn seven, then turn eight should become fairly trivial for us. Turns 9 and 10 feel a lot like turns 6 and 7, just going in the opposite direction. For turn 9, we're looking to carry a lot of speed through the apex, and as we exit, we want to exit in control so we can set ourselves up for a good final corner at turn 10. If we're sloppy on exit here, there is almost no time to recover as we head towards turn 10. With that in mind, we're coming off of a fast section of track, and we don't have much of an exit to work with, so we can actually really carry a lot of speed through the apex and be a little bit slower and more in control on the exit to find our time here. We once again want to use as much of the entry curbing as we possibly can, and we can start braking and turning in right around the 50 board. Our goal here is to guide the car into the apex and not take away too much speed under braking, so we're really just adding some light braking to help the front tires grip better and allow the car to rotate. As we head towards the apex, we want to aim to use some of the red and white curbing, but I did find that using too much of it could cause us to bottom out or unsettle the car, so the amount we use on this lap is right around the maximum. As we head towards the apex, we once again want to have our eyes as far up the road as we can and looking at the exit as soon as possible so we can spot the moment it becomes clear we can stay within the track limits and get back on throttle. On exit, we actually have a ton of space to work with, and as long as our tires stay in contact with the green and white curbing here, we're good to go in avoiding an off track. Remember, our goal here on exit is focused on staying in control on exit 
so that we can enter turn 10 in control. On this lap, I actually leave a little bit of margin on exit to avoid the off track, but you can use more of the curbing here to carry a little bit more speed if you want to play more with the track limits. I should also note that going too far beyond the track limits here not only gives you an off track, but a slowdown as well. For turn 10, we have a couple of things to balance. We want to carry as much speed as we can through the corner so we can head onto the main straight and across the line with a lot of speed, but we need to make sure we don't run wide on exit because there is a terrible slowdown penalty there. I should note that you have almost no time to serve that slowdown penalty before the line, so it's especially important to avoid that penalty on the last lap, otherwise you'll get pushed down the order. Anyway, to make sure that we don't run wide, we have to take our patience approach once again. We don't need to slow the car a ton, but we do need to wait to allow it to rotate enough so that we're pointed in the right direction on exit to avoid running wide. As we get to the end of the red painted area, we can start turning in and braking and we're only looking to brake enough to help the car with this rotation and not push wide on exit. As the car rotates towards the apex, we're looking to use all of the red and white curbing at the apex and avoid that yellow anti-cut curbing, which can also easily push us wide on exit. As we get to the apex, we're also getting to the bottom of the hill, so we have a compression zone to work with that gives us more grip for turning. It's at this compression zone that we can aggressively get back on throttle, knowing that we'll have the extra grip from the compression to help us finish our rotation through the exit. If we run wide at the apex or carry too much speed into the entry, we can't maximize the compression here. So the key to speed for turn 10 is being ready to get back on throttle at the compression by running a good line through the apex and not going too quickly through there. As we get back on throttle, we just need to monitor our trajectory towards the exit and we can start to open up our hands by keeping our vision up the track once again. All of the green and white curbing is fair play here again, and on this lap I left a little bit on the table just to be safe in avoiding the off track and slowdown that you can get here. It's important to note that the margin between a slowdown and an off track here is minor, so you're playing with fire by abusing track limits. And per usual, just thank you again so much for watching, so much for the comments, the suggestions, the subscriptions, all of that. Every bit of feedback that I get from you guys is super, super helpful and valuable to me just to, to keep me motivated to continue to do those. And again, we're trying to grow the channel. I'm going to dive into some different content types. So yeah, just any love and support that I get from you guys now is, uh, is super helpful on that journey. Anyway, um, I'll play the lap one more time just so you have it at the uh, after I get done rambling here. Um, but I hope you have a good and fun week of racing. Um, I hope you're enjoying yourselves out there racing. Remember, we do this to have fun. So don't take it too seriously. Uh, have a good time out there. Take care of yourselves until next time. Okay, bye.